to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. Luke chapter 11, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our study of the subject of prayer. Today we're thinking about what we need to learn and be taught to pray to the best of our ability to make prayer such a powerful tool in the Christian's life. And so we're so glad that you joined us for our study today. If you don't have your Bible, we want you to locate it, have it handy, get it ready, as we're going to look to the Word of God for the subject of prayer. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Uh, you'll find people there who love God, who are concerned about souls, who want to help men and women get to heaven. And so check out the Lord's Church in your area. You won't be disappointed that you did. They just preach the Bible, want to follow God's will in every way. Friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to help you in your desire to know God, your desire to know God and His will better. Visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our material. We have written material, study questions, articles, audio lessons, video lessons, just a wide variety of good Bible study tools. And as well, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our previous lessons, we'll make those available to you free of charge. Go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. Fill out our media request form. Uh, you can receive a digital download instantaneously, or as well, you can receive uh, those online as well. That will be a great benefit to you in your life. And so check out our website. We'll send it to you information free of charge. Just let us know what's the best way to get that to you. And as always, we encourage people to download the Gospel of Christ app, both for the Android and the Apple phones. They're available in the respective stores there. And so check that out as well. Today we're thinking about the great subject of teach us to pray. Jesus said, or the disciples, once they heard Jesus and they heard John pray, they, they, they said, we, they heard that and they were impressed and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. We want to pray like that. We want to learn how to do that. We need that power from God also. Teach us to be better at prayer. Friend, I need to realize that prayer is something you learn. Prayer is something you grow in. Prayer is something you've got to be taught by God about in the Scripture to use it as, effect as effectively as God wants us to. And so let's think about some things as it relates to the idea of teach us to pray. Number one, Christians have got to realize, I've got to realize the importance and the need for prayer in my life and you do in yours. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse number 17. Listen, listen to what Jesus said about prayer in Matthew chapter 14, verse number 23. It said about Jesus, when he had sent the multitudes away, listen to this, Jesus went up on the mountain himself to pray. Now in it, when evening came, he was alone there. Even Jesus needed prayer. Matthew 26, 53, Jesus is in the garden and he's praying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, not my will, but thine be done. Friend, I need to understand just how valuable and just how important prayer is in the Christian's life. I, I, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that a correct understanding of what prayer is and how it should be used, that'll help us to utilize prayer more effectively in our life. And so what does the Bible say 
on the subject of prayer. First, let's think about some, some prerequisites, some things that are necessary ahead of time to pray as God wants us to pray. As we've mentioned, you've got to be taught to pray. You can't just pray without understanding the guidelines, uh, what God wants you to pray, the mechanics and the fundamentals of that. And so let's talk about what some of those are from the scripture. What must I have in my heart to pray correctly? I need to pray with a firm belief. James 1 verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, listen to this, if any of you lacks, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea tossed to and fro. Let not that man suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. When I pray, I need to pray in faith. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that I think God's going to give me everything? That, that, that's not necessarily the idea. I pray in faith, my faith in God, my faith in who He is, my faith in His ability to know what's best and do what's best for my life. I pray that if it's God's will, I know it'll be done because I have confidence in God, His character, and the value importance of prayer. And then, my friend, you've got to pray according to God's will. Uh, let me share a verse with you. Open your Bible to 1 John chapter 5. Prayer has to be following the directives that God has given us according to His will, not, not selfish or, or human interest. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in Him. If we ask anything, According to His will, He hears us. And we know that He hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we've asked of Him. And so we've got confidence in praying that if there's a condition, it's according to His will, He'll do that. Friend, I can't, I can't go out and pray, God, give me a million dollars. That's, that's not the idea. I can't go out and pray, God, my neighbor uh, over here is doing things that really aggravate me. I want you to bring down your vengeance. No, that's, that's not what we're talking about. God, help me win the lottery. That's not what we're talking about. I want to pray according to God's will, that His will, His desire, His plan can be worked out in my life and that God will help me to be a better person, help me with the problems I face so that God's plan can run freely in my life and He can be glorified. You know, another prerequisite to prayer is that I need to pray with uh, a humble and contrite attitude. Let, let me contrast two men with you one who was a good one who was had the right heart in prayer and one who had a terrible heart in prayer open your bible to luke chapter 18 and let me show you the type of heart and attitude god wants us to have in prayer turn to luke chapter 18 and i'd like for you to begin reading with me in verse number 10. the bible says two men went up to the temple to pray one a pharisee the other a tax collector the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, uh, would, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but, but, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Why? For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Contrast these two men. They both go to the temple to pray. That's why they're there. They're there to pray. And so this is a lesson. This teaches us about prayer, right? One, and listen to this t terminology. One man prayed thus with himself. It's as though he's praying to himself, about himself. He's exalting himself. He prayed thus with himself. God, thank you that you didn't make me bad like everybody else, like this tax collector, like these murderers, like these extortioners, like these adults. I'm glad I'm better than everybody else. Look at what I do. Aren't you glad I am too? I fast, I, I give, I do all these good things. Now what a pious, 
What a prideful man. What a heart that God despises. God despises the proud in heart. Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 9. And then think about this other man. He stands afar off. He doesn't even feel like he deserves to get close. He stands afar off. He, he, he beats his breast. And his prayer is simply, God, I'm a sinner. I need your help. And Jesus said, which of these two men you think went down their house justified? This latter one. Why? He knew he was wrong. He knew he needed God's help. He didn't think his way up here better than God. He knew he needed God. What do I learn from this context? Friend, I need to have a humble attitude. Luke 14, 11, whoever exalts himself be humbled. He who humbles himself will be exalted. And so some of the prerequisites of prayer then are that we've got to pray with the right heart and attitude according to the will of God. But also, we don't want our prayer life to be like the, the hypocrites that we read about in the Bible. If there is a pattern not to follow, it's these. Look, it's this one. Look in Matthew chapter 6. Don't, don't let your prayer life fall into the trap of being like the hypocrites. Look at Matthew 6, verses 5 through 7. Jesus said, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. When you've shut the door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they'll be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. This is an example of how not to pray, okay? You don't stand on the street corner wearing the religious garb. Everybody look at me. Look at him. He's a religious person. He's better than everybody else. Standing out there saying these big $5 words when reality, they were full of dead men's bones. They were whitewashed sepulchers. Uh, it's not something we do for show, is what Jesus say. Uh, they use these vain, they've got these words that most people coin as religious words, and they say these vain things over and over, and somehow they think that makes them more righteous. They're just hypocrites. They are just playing the part to be seen by men. And Jesus said, if that's what they want, they've got their reward. People are looking at them, but God's not. And so don't be in it for show. Don't be in it for, hey, I can get people to look at me. Look at everybody thinks I'm religious. I'm here wearing this fancy suit and saying these big $5 words and I'm repeating what I've... No, that, that's, don't be like the hypocrites who are... I'm not saying it's wrong to wear a suit or, 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 or use different words. That's not what I'm saying. But it's not about show. It's not about showing out religiously. It's not about having people look at you and think you're better or you're some more religious person than everybody else. That's the pattern not to follow. As we mentioned previously, prayer must be offered in Jesus' name. Uh, John 14, 14. John 16, verse 23. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, verses 5 through 6. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Up to this point, Jesus said, you've not asked anything in my name. From now on, you pray to the Father in my name. 1 Timothy 2, verses 5 through 6, there is one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus himself, and thus we pray by Jesus' authority. To do something in someone's name means to do it by their authority. Acts 4, verse 7, they asked Peter and John, by what name or by what authority? I have the right to approach God through Jesus as my mediator and through His authority, being at the right hand of God as our mediator. Scriptural prayer is also with the spirit and the understanding, meaning this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, Paul said, I'll pray with the Spirit and I'll pray with the understanding. I'll sing with the Spirit and I'll sing with the understanding. What, what are we talking about with that? The Spirit is who I, it's my Spirit, I believe. That's who I am. My heart is involved. My emotion is involved. I'm thinking about it. My whole soul, spirit, mind, and body are involved in that. And with the understanding. 
You can't just be repeating things that you've heard. You can't wander off mind. I'm not saying we don't all struggle with that from time to time, but you need to have your whole person and you need to be thinking about what you're praying. I need to be thinking about, I'm talking to God and this is a privilege and an opportunity to approach Him. And then there is this prerequisite to pray. I've got to be right with God and I've got to be right with my brother. I've got to have right relationships with God and with others for God to hear our prayer. Let me show you that from the scripture. Would you open to Psalm 66, 18? Someone who is living in abject rebellion to the will of God, someone who's living in sin and has no desire to change that, God doesn't hear that person's prayer, the Bible says. Let me show you. Open to Psalm 66, 18. The psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, regard means I've got it there, I know I'm sinning, I'm living in rebellion to the will of God, I want my sin in God also. If I regard iniquity in my heart, watch this, the Lord, the Bible says, the Lord will not hear. Look at Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. If someone knows the will of God and chooses not to do that and disobeys God's will, God doesn't hear that person's prayer either, the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. He who turns away his ear from hearing the law, the Bible says even his prayer is an abomination to God. And then what about my relationship with my brother? Listen to what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And so I can't regard iniquity in my heart, can't, can't live in my sin and think God's going to hear and it's going to bless me. I can't turn my ear away from God's word, know what God says to do and choose not to do it. And I can't be an unforgiving person. If someone is sinning, and they, I can't hold that in my heart. I've got to be right with God and my brother as a prerequisite to prayer. Now, friend, am I saying, am I saying that you have to live perfect? That, that if you mess up, you say something you shouldn't, you're trying to walk in the light, you mess up, say something or do something you shouldn't have done, that God's never going to, that's not the idea. If my heart's penitent and I'm trying to walk in the light, and I repent and confess of that, 1 John 1, verses 7 through 10, and I'm trying to do right, yeah, God hears that person, but not if I regard it in my heart, which means I'm holding it, I'm holding on to it and continuing to do it. That's the difference. And then let's talk about, as it relates to teach us to pray, let's talk about maybe a practical plan for prayer in a person's everyday life. Prayer ought to be the very first thing every morning. How do we know that? It was what Jesus did. Mark 1, verse 35, early in the morning, a great while before daylight, Jesus departed, went to a solitary place, and there he prayed. He got up early. He got away from the rat race of life. He took time before his day started in prayer to God. Friend, what a great pattern for us to follow. Prayer ought to be a good habit. Daniel 6, verse 10, Daniel with his windows open toward Jerusalem, prayed three times in defiance of the king's will, prayed three times, listen to this, as was his custom from early days. Prayer ought to be a good habit in your life. Prayer should be a time between you and God where you can lay out your heart to God. Matthew 6, verse 6, you can go into that inner room, you can shut the door, and you can pray to God who hears in secret, and he'll bless you. A biblical plan morning, noon, and evening. Psalm 55, verse 17, I cry unto thee daily, morning, evening, and noon, the psalmist would say. And for in prayer ought to, you know, we can set a plan, we can say pray first thing in the morning, pray morning, evening, and noon, but in reality, there ought to never be a time when you can't pray. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. Pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 17. And so let's talk about in the remainder of our time the, today some, some things that 
I ought to pray for? What are some things the Bible says that each of us ought to pray for in our daily lives? Number one, I ought to pray for the lost. Matthew 9, verses 36 through 38, Jesus looked out on the crowds, and His response was, they're like sheep without a shepherd. And then He turned to His disciples and He said, pray that the Lord of hosts will send out laborers into His harvest. What should I, I should be praying for the lost. There are, think about all the people every day who leave this life unprepared unprepared for eternity. I ought to pray that God will open doors, that God will help us to reach them with the gospel. What else should I pray for? I ought to pray to overcome sin and to overcome Satan. Luke 18, 1, men ought always to pray and never lose heart. Simon, Simon, Satan desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you. Jesus would say to Peter, Luke chapter 23, verse number 43. I want to pray that sin, listen to these words, Matthew 6, when Jesus taught them, verses 6 through 10, that disciples' prayer, and to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's sin and that's Satan. That's what I've got to overcome every day in my life. I ought to pray to overcome the temptation that we face. Where does sin come from? Sin is born in my heart and in my own desire and temptation, according to James 1, verses 13 through 15. But God is able to deliver us out of that temptation, and we ought to pray that He would do exactly that. Christians ought to pray for the forgiveness of sin. Acts chapter 8, Simon, not long after he had obeyed the gospel, fell back for a momentary time into his old habit. Peter said, your money perish with you. He was in a lost state as a child of God. Your money perish with you. Your heart's not right with God. Pray uh, that God will forgive you, Simon Peter would say. And Simon said, pray to me that none of the things you have pray for me, that none of the things you have spoken will come upon me. Acts 8 verses 22 through 26. When I pray, I'm trying to walk in the light. You're trying to walk in the light. We want to do good and do what's right, but we make mistakes. We, we do things that are not right. Every time I want to pray, God, forgive me if I've sinned against you in any way. And when I know especially, I want to have a heart that is willing to turn from that sin and turn to God. What else should we pray for regularly? We ought to pray for those who are sick and those who are suffering. James 5, verses 13 through 15, Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. The prayer of faith will save him. If he sin, the Lord will forgive him of those sins. When people are sick and suffering, Christians should pray for them. And if it's God's will, uh, listen to 3 John 9. Uh, John said, I, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health just as your soul prospers. That's what we're talking about. Uh, 2 John 9, that we pray and encourage one another and pray for those who are sick and those who are suffering. But you know, as much as sick physically, the Bible teaches us to pray for those who are erring, who fall fallen away and are sick spiritually. 1 John 5, 16, If anyone wonders for the truth, we who are spiritual ought to turn them, or turn them back in a spirit of, of kindness and meekness. And we ought to pray that those people will see the error of their way and come back to God. Christians are taught to pray for wisdom. I need the ability to take this truth, God's truth, and apply that to my everyday life tomorrow. If any of you lacks wisdom, hey, I like wisdom in certain areas, and you probably do as well. If any of you lacks wisdom, What's the cure for that? Let him ask of God, who gives to all, listen to this, liberally and without reproach. Now hear the promise. It will be given to him. I need to pray that God will grant me the wisdom that I can take his truth, apply it to my life tomorrow, live a good Christian life, and be an influence and make an impact on other people. Friends, we also ought to pray for the necessities of life. Philippians chapter, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. James 4, verses 3 and 4. 
Uh, Matthew 6, verses 6 through 9, Give us this day our daily bread. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. Sometimes we don't have because we don't ask. James chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. And so as it relates to the daily necessities of life, pray to God. Let Him help you. Listen, the Bible says, cast all your cares upon Him. He cares for you. What about praying before we eat? Is that biblical? Think about 1 Timothy 4, verses 4 and 5. The Bible says that some were commanding not to marry and to abstain from meats, which God created to be used carefully or rightly. For the Bible says, those things are sanctified by the Word of God and prayer. Isn't that interesting? There's no food that is unclean today. We're not living under that law, but it is sanctified by the Word of God because God said so and by prayer. When Christians pray, why do we pray before we eat? Because we want God to set this apart to help us to be strong and to use His, what God's given us to His glory in this life. What else should we pray for? Friend, in, a, in an immoral and evil world, where governments are often focused on things they ought not to. We desperately need to pray for world leaders. 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 following, I pray, Paul said, I desire that prayer, supplication, giving the thanks be made for all men, kings and all who are in authority. Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who wants all men to be saved. For the spreading of the gospel for peace to exist, for doors to be opened. We need to pray for those who are in positions of power. And so we hope today we've seen some things in the Bible that will teach us how to pray correctly and that will help us to be a people of prayer. And friend, if you've never obeyed the gospel, we'd love to study with you that further, study with you that further. If you're not a child of God, just contact us. And as always, we encourage you to join us next time as we'll study more about the Word of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.